Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be reviewing this uh, solar portable power station by Upe. They sent me this unit to review so we're going to put it through all the tests and paces and check out all the features and then I'll give you my pros and cons at the end of that after we put it through a bunch of tests. This is a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 1000 watt surge and it also has a 595 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. That's my favorite feature. A Life PO4 or lithium iron phosphate battery is very stable. It's very fire safe. It's very lightweight and you can get up to 3600 charges out of those uh, charge cycles with that battery. So that means if you discharged it and charged it every single day, it lasts you 9.8 years and the battery wouldn't even be dead. So I think that's very, very cool. Uh, my favorite feature for sure. Uh, it has eight power ports coming out of this guy, including two AC outlets with 110 uh, volts. And uh, you can power up to 600 watts off of those two. It also has two USB-A ports with uh, 3.0 fast charging and also a type C connection as well that can power a device or charge the uh, portable power pack as well. So you can go in through that port and it also has three 12 volt DC connections on this device as well. So a lot of stuff that you can actually plug in with this guy and use. Um, the battery itself, they say that you could, you could basically charge a phone 45 times, a camera 37 times, a laptop 8.7 times, and even run a TV for 4.7 hours or a light for like 43 hours. So you can do a lot with that power. You could also run electric portable coolers, uh, CPAP machines, a TV, a projector, your router, your modem so you keep the internet on, lights, all kinds of stuff. So great for van lifers, camping, emergency power outages, pretty handy little device. Um, it also has a LED light on the back of it. So if you are in a power outage situation or camping, it's a really bright LED with a low mode, bright, and an SOS feature where it flashes SOS in case of an emergency uh, for rescue stuff and things like that. Um, also wanna go over the display. Now displays can irk me with other units when they don't have enough information in there. Um, I want to know what's going on with my unit and how much power I'm using, et cetera. This actually has a really, really nice display, which I love. It shows the amount of wattage that you're using. It shows the amount of wattage coming in while you're charging it. It also shows the battery percentage um, with an actual percentage number. And then a blue ring for the battery as well that goes down as it goes down. And below that, it has an estimated time to empty. So if you're using 200 watts and it says this many hours to empty, if you're using more wattage than that, it's gonna, it's gonna adjust that to say like three hours until empty. So that's really cool. It tells you what's on uh, plug turned on and turned on with the device. So lots of information there, which I really, really like. Uh, there's lots of ways to charge this. You can charge it with solar. It has a 12 volt to 30 volt uh, input on the side. So with two 100 watt solar panels, you can charge this guy in 7.5 hours. Uh, with the included car charger, you can charge it up in 10.5 hours. The included wall outlet charger, you can charge it up in 7.5 hours. And with the USB-C connection, which you can power devices or charge this device, you can charge it up in 12 hours. Um, and the fastest way is when you combine the wall charger and the USB-C, you can charge this guy 3.5 hours to 80% and five hours to full. Those are pretty good charge times considering how small and lightweight this guy is. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a little more solar input, but for a small portable guy like this, that's actually pretty good. So I like that as well. And for protecting the battery, it's always important to have a good BMS or battery management system uh, to protect your battery from different scenario. So they cover over discharge protection, overload protection, overcharge protection, short circuit, over voltage, over temperature and low temperature. So if it's too cold, it's going to shut the battery down too hot. Any of those scenarios, it's going to protect the battery. So you don't do any damage in weird uh, different situations. So I like that, that it has a really good BMS module inside. Um, I think that covers just about everything. We're just going to jump out there and start putting this guy through testing and show you how it works. And uh, if you end up being interested, I will put a link in the description down below that will take you over there so you can check it out. And also, I always try and get you guys a coupon code that will give you the absolute best price on the internet. And that information will be down in the description as well. So let's get right out there and check this guy out. Okay, so other than the actual unit itself, inside the box, you're going to have 
uh, your car charging adapter, also part of your AC wall adapter. And you're gonna have a manual and a warranty in the second box, as well as your power brick for your AC wall charger. The unit itself, to turn on, you just hold down the power button. And then to activate the inverter, you push this little button below the plugs there. And then for your, uh, your USB section, there's a little button and also your 12 volt power supply section. You can also plug all kinds of cool little adapters into these little plugs. Um, and in order to turn any of these on or off, again, you just touch the button to activate whichever uh, little section that you'd like to use for powering devices to save power. And then of course you can just turn it off by holding down the power button again. This unit weighs 15 pounds, so it's very lightweight. And on the side, we're gonna have our 12 volt to 30 volt charging plug. This is where you plug in your solar panels, your car charger, or your AC wall adapter. I put that little label on there. And then we're gonna have this nice LED light and you have low, high, and then an SOS feature that's gonna blink out SOS in case of an emergency situation. And one more press is gonna turn that guy off. Now, uh, the light itself is very bright. You can see just in my basement here, it really lights stuff up really, really well. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna power this 65 inch flat screen TV, an Amazon Fire Stick, the GoPro, and my laptop camera, or my laptop computer, and we're also gonna turn on the uh, LED light in the back and see how long it'll run all of that. So now the TV's booted up, the Fire Stick's on, the GoPro's charging, we're gonna, and it, we're powered up, we have the laptop, which does indicate that it is also charging, and then just for fun, we're gonna turn on the LED light on the back of the unit as well, and then we're gonna see how long all of that stuff runs. So here in the front, right as we start the test, it says we're using about 124 watts, and it says that we're probably gonna go for 4.3 hours. So here's the time lapse. I know it's not that exciting because the display turned off, but at the end of this time lapse, we are gonna end up at four hours and 30 minutes until we get the error 02 code for low battery voltage, and the whole thing shuts off. So pretty cool. Okay, so we was able to run that 60 inch flat screen TV, the Amazon Fire Stick, which is providing the Netflix and stuff, my laptop, and also the LED light that's on the back of the unit was turned on to high, and the GoPro camera for four and a half hours. So that's pretty impressive, I like that. Now what we're gonna do is really just kind of hook up as much stuff as I can, little things, electronics, to kind of show you uh, how many things you can actually get going off this guy if you get a little creative. So let's jump into the next test and just hook up all kinds of stuff. Okay, in this experiment, what I have is a watt meter hooked up and then I have a power strip connected to that so I can plug in lots of other devices. Uh, so we don't just have the two plugs, I added a whole bunch more. So we're gonna go ahead and power on the inverter here. You can see our watt meter kick up so we can kind of monitor how much energy we're using. And I just have a ton of stuff plugged in. What we have going on here is a laptop computer that's charging. I also have uh, this desktop down below is being turned on. We have the GoPro, my phone, that, that fan, that oscillating fan on high. And then we also have the small fire tablet. We have an LG tablet as well. Three drone batteries are all simultaneously charging. We also have this small desktop fan plugged into the DC port. And we're even running that desk lamp uh, that's red up there in the corner and this little LED ring light as well. So all of this stuff is being powered by that little guy right there. And we're only using 300 watts and it's actually capable of handling 600 watts, no problem. So right now you can see we're using 307 watts. So we could use double this, the amount of this power and be completely fine. So I think that's really, really cool that it's running all of this and uh, we're at 89% and we can go for another 1.3 hours. Um, so we're gonna see exactly how long it runs all of this and check in with it. Okay, well, we've gone about an hour and a lot of this stuff is at full charge now. So our wattage is at 200 when we were at 300. So what we're gonna do is just call that good and kind of see where we're at and shut everything down here. So let's check out what we got. We're at 52%. It says we'll go for about another 1.1 hours. And so now what I'm gonna do is just turn off the power button. Boom. Lost all the lights and everything that doesn't have a battery. So I think that's pretty cool. 
Um, and of course the monitors were not plugged in, but the desktop down below was, so the monitors turned off. Um, and if we look, we turn it back on, we're at 52% running all this stuff for an hour. So you still have plenty of time to use it for something else, mattress inflators or you name it. So pretty cool. All right, so there you have it. This thing is actually really cool. Uh, now we're going to go over some of the pros and cons and things I like and maybe I think need to be improved upon. Um, as far as things I like, at 15 pounds, this thing is very portable. It seems well made. Um, it's got nice rubber feet on the bottom, so you're not going to scratch up surfaces when you set it up there. I love the lithium iron phosphate battery. That's so cool. It should last a really, really long time. Um, I love the display, lots of information on the display, which I always like. So there's a lot of things to really enjoy about this unit. Um, I'm really hoping it lasts a long time. I think I'm really gonna enjoy it. It has a lot of uh, stuff packed into it. The LED light on the back is a cool feature, uh, just so you can see what's going on, use it like a lantern. Um, it has a lot of great stuff going for it. Um, as far as cons go, um, when I was filming it, uh, I kind of wish there was a way to toggle the display to always remain on, because sometimes you might just want to be able to look over at it at a glance and see how much power you have left or whatever. But I know it probably saves power having the display turn off, which is fine. You just have to walk up to it and tap the power button to see what's going on. I wish there was an always on option. Um, other than that, let's see, I wouldn't mind a little more solar input, so you could maybe charge it in half the time by doubling that. But uh, for, for its size and weight class and everything else, like it's really not a deal breaker at all. And uh, there's one thing that kind of scared me while I was reviewing this unit for a minute before I realized what was going on. I completely discharged the battery to 0% and then I let it I didn't recharge it for like three or four days. So when I went to recharge it, I plugged it in and uh, the display came on for a second, but then it turned off. And then I just heard the fan kind of pulsing like ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. And, and it was unresponsive. It wouldn't turn on, uh, different stuff was going on. I was like, what's happening? So I gave it a couple minutes, unplugged it, plugged it back in, trying to figure it out. And then the display came on and it said E02, like error code 02. And I was like, uh oh, here we go. But it turns out that's actually just battery under voltage protection from the battery management system. And all you have to do for this is just leave it plugged in for about 10 minutes. You got to wait for that battery to, for it to wake up the battery and get the battery up to like two or 3% before it's going to allow everything to kick on and function. And so that was basically just its way of protecting the battery and letting it slowly wake it up and get it back to charging and then everything worked normally. But I thought that was some kind of problem or error. If yours does that, it seems a little buggy until it gets to one or 2% and that's just because it's charging the battery slowly and waking them up uh, from being at fault protection on low voltage. So it works fine. It hasn't even happened since, but since I drained it to zero and left it for a few days, it had to wake those batteries up for about 10 minutes. So if yours does that, that's what's going on. Other than that, I really like this unit. I think it's pretty cool. And um, if you're interested, I will put the link down below that'll take you straight over to it. And I will put a discount code down there that'll try and get you the best price on the internet from them. So thank you very much, Upe, for sending this to me to review. I really like it. I'd like to check out some solar panels. And they even have a, I think, 1100 watt version of this so i'll be interested to see that as well the lithium iron phosphate batteries make this super duper cool so that about wraps it up if it helped you out please like share subscribe that really helps me out and until the next video my name is jim with full moon adventure club thank you so much for watching and happy camping